towns emerged all over the world on account of various reasons. These include increase in trade and commerce, surplus food production, use of fallow land, development of crafts, and extensive use of iron. In this chapter, we will study the following concepts. Tremendous growth of agriculture, village life, towns, industry, trade, society. Tremendous growth of agriculture. In the 6th century BC, the widespread use of iron implements in eastern Uttar Pradesh and western Bihar led to tremendous growth of agriculture. The new iron agricultural tools and implements allowed peasants to produce more food grains than they needed for their own consumption. In addition to new tools, better agricultural techniques such as transplantation and ample irrigation from tanks, canals, wells, artificial lakes also served to increase production. The extra produce was collected by the rulers to meet their military and administrative needs. The surplus could also be made available to the towns which had sprung up in the 6th century BC and which continued to prosper due to the increase in trade and commerce. Village life The village was a distinct unit of rural life. Farmers, landlords, laborers, etc. lived in villages. Village life was quite different from the urban life. Villagers were called by different names in northern and southern parts of India. In South India, the Tamil region, landlords were called Velalars, armors were called Uzhavar, and laborers, slaves, etc. were called Kadasyar and Adimai. Grama Bhojka In northern India, the village headman was called a Grama Bhojka. This was a hereditary post and was usually held by a big landlord. He served as a link between the king and the village. He was very powerful in village affairs. He had judicial powers to settle the village disputes. His main role was to collect taxes from farmers on behalf of the king. He was responsible for maintaining law and order in the village. Grihapatis Small landowners were known as Grihapatis. Landless people were called Dasa or Karmakara. The other people who lived in villages followed a variety of occupations. For example, carpenters, potters, blacksmiths, weavers and laborers. Towns Many new towns sprang up due to the growth of crafts and commerce and came to be known as capitals of the Mahajanapadas. Some of the more important towns were Vaishali, Banaras, Kaushambi, Patliputra, and Mathura. Most of these towns have been described in the literary texts of this period. Material remains of this period throw light on the life in some of these early cities. Sculptures carved scenes depict people's lives in towns and villages as well as in the forests. On the other hand, archaeologists have found a number of ring wells made of baked clay or ceramics which were used as toilets drains or garbage dumps. The most important town was Mathura since it was situated on the crossroad of two important trade routes, one from the northwest to the east and the other from the north to south. Mathura also prospered because of central location and as a center of sculpture, craft, goldsmiths, blacksmiths, weavers, garland makers, etc. and religion. Most Kushana towns existed on the Uttra Patha route from Mathura to Taxila. The security and encouragement given by Kushana Empire boosted commerce and trade even more. Industry The period under review saw remarkable progress in the industrial field. From the literature, inscriptions and sculptures of the period, we have numerous references to various arts, crafts and professions that flourished during this period. The textile industry produced woolen and cotton fabrics, jewelry making, ivory working, pottery, painting, furniture and leather based industries were quite advanced. Gold, silver, copper and iron mines 
were in full production within the level of technology available in those days. Ship building, stone cutting and weapon making were other important industrial activities. Trade There was flourishing trade with the Roman Empire in luxury goods. The Romans imported spices, muslin, pearls, jewels and precious stones from central and southern India. Silk came through the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent and was diverted to the Indian ports on the eastern and western coasts of India. From these ports, silk was exported to Western Europe. The Romans exported wine amphorae, potteries, glassware, gems, etc. to the Asian countries. Guilds Almost every trade or industry of this period had its own guild. Guilds, sherins, were highly developed organizations. These organizations were formed by those involved in a particular commercial activity. This parallels a similar development in medieval Europe. The Jatakas refer to 18 guilds. Each guild laid down rules and regulations for the conduct of its members. They monitored the quality of the finished product and standardized prices. They also acted as bankers, financiers and trustees sometimes. The guilds even maintained armies and helped the king in times of need. The head of a guild was called Ajithaka. Society While villages were mainly engaged in agricultural activities, towns and cities developed into centers of trade. In course of time, towns people developed a variety of occupations and skills. This gave rise to distinctive sets of people engaged in a variety of occupations. The spurt in trade led to the formation of mercantile organizations known as guilds. This marked the beginning of specialized occupations. Since artisans lived and worked together, they grew very close to one another and marriage alliances followed. Men began to follow in their father's footsteps and joined their traditional family occupations. Coins Coins throws light on the political and economic condition of the country. The Romans paid for imports with gold and silver coins. More than 80 finds of Roman coins have been recorded, most of them from South India. Coins called Shatmana, Karpshana, etc. is mentioned in literature of the period.